Hi, this is Keith Klein, and I'm here today with Ryan Nunn, one of the IT specialists from Defiance College, to ask him a few questions uh, regarding the, uh, the smart board and its technology. Thank you, Ryan, for doing the interview. No problem. Thank you. Question number one, why did the college decide to purchase the smart boards? Um, at the time, they were the industry standard uh, for interactive learning. A lot of the other K-4 schools were using it, so seem to merge right into the higher education part of things and uh, the education department was really pushing for it. That became the whole you know, smart board usage of DC. Okay, good. And then that can make the transition easier for actually students when they come to the college because they've been exposed to it at yeah. the high school level. Yeah. Okay, good. Question two. What were other types of boards that Promethean examined before purchasing the smart board? Uh, the smart board integration here at DC happened, it was been quite a few years ago, and at the time, uh, the other the other companies providing similar uh, hardware and software options were near the level of smart board at the time. Since smart board was such an industry leader there, and such you know, so widely used, there really wasn't much uh, much examining of other companies' products in that, that range. So really then it made it just a relatively easy choice to, yeah. to go ahead and purchase it. Yeah. Okay, question three. Who will monitor the maintenance schedule and the upgrades uh, of the software process? Uh, actually, this is a this is split up between two departments. Um, audiovisual takes care of the hardware. Uh, they actually make the uh, smart board purchases and replacements. Uh, my side of things is making sure the software is always working on all the computers that they're hooked up to. And then I'm in charge of keeping the software up to date. So it's, it's a uh, little bit of a juggling act, but it seems to be working out pretty well. So you're saying it's a team effort between you and? Audiovisual. Audiovisual. Mm -hmm. And question four, will professional development training be available to maximize the full potential of the smart board for, let's say, faculty, staff, coaches, and students? When they were first uh, purchased and implemented, uh, the ARC Center took care of training. I couldn't tell you who's been taking care of it, if anybody, uh, since the initial implementation. Uh, our department doesn't do much with, with uh, training of individual software packages. Okay. Using the smart board is pretty self-explanatory. Using the smart board software is where it's at on how to take full advantage of you know, things you can do with these devices. And, uh, the ARC Center is now called the Learning Commons. We did it before Robin Kratzer headed that up. But I don't believe, at least I'm not aware of, of who's doing it now, if anybody. So basically, then the, the staff or the faculty then are pretty much required to, to just learn it on their own. If Correct. they have any questions, they can come to you or they, maybe the auto visual person. Yeah, um, I know Matt and I both help with some basic uh, software questions uh, to do with this. But uh, for the most part, send them out to uh, SmartBoard's got a pretty good FAQ out there on how to use their software. And it's all free. You can go out to their software, download it, or go out to their website, download the software, and you can install it on your own computer and uh, play with it there too. So it's not specific to just the power of certain schools. So you're saying the, it's accessible basically to anybody yeah. as long as they have a computer they can download the manual and kind of... Download the manual, they can actually download the software and install it on their own computer and use it. You can use the software without an actual smart board anywhere. The smart board gives you all the interactive ability through the touch screen and check them. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. No Take care. Appreciate have a good day. It. Yep. You too. Good morning, this is Keith Klein, and I am interviewing Justin Marroquin, who is a building technology sports specialist in the Napoleon City School District in uh, Napoleon, Ohio. Morning, Justin, how are you? Not too bad. Thanks, Good. Klein. Question one, how has the transition been moving from the overhead projector to the smart board? Well, it's been about, oh, a two-year transition now from when we first started. And at first, it was somewhat 
Rocky and some of the teachers were pretty tentative to use the smart word because it was something new to them, um, and they couldn't, you know, find the right resources to use, and they had a lot of information given to them, them at once, so it was difficult for them to decipher what was really important and the best way to use the smart word. But two years into it, now every teacher in the entire school, and ours is a pre-K to one school, use the smart board as like the centerpiece of their instruction and really utilize it to keep the students engaged and learning at all times. Yeah, I can attest to that when you have a new piece of technology, that fear factor people have, you know, they just want to try to stay away from it until they become familiar with it and then become proficient at using it in front of the students. Yeah, and that was the most difficult part, I think, because I had gone to multiple trainings before the smart boards were even put in place, um, but I'm also an intervention specialist at the school, too, so they would call on me to help them out with some of their projects and some of their lessons, but it wasn't always at, you know, the most opportuni opportunistic times for me because, you know, I would have my own planning or my own lessons I would have to do. So there's a lot of after-school instruction, and those few teachers that really wanted to learn at first did a terrific job of, you know, making some extra time, and we all put in a little extra work and helped each other out learning the smart board, and then it seemed like all the other teachers started to come on board with, you know, utilizing it to the best way possible. Pretty good. Question two, is the smart board located as a centerpiece of instruction in your classroom or any of the other teachers' classrooms? Yeah, it was terrific. The first year they were all put into the um, regular, ed regular education classrooms, and now I am into the... Uh, with it being the third year, it's actually in every classroom. Even some of the title classrooms have um, smart boards located in them. My classroom itself, where I teach students with special needs, um, I got a smart board about two years ago, and I've been using it every, pretty much daily ever since. So you're saying it's a really good piece of technology to actively engage your students in the classroom? Yes, exactly. Good. Question three. Have the students adapted adequately to receiving instruction from the smart board? You know, it being a pre-K to first grade school, that was the most difficult part, is teaching the transition between, yes, they can read a story online, um, but then can they use that information to, to you know, show some of the same skills that were taught online or on the smart board, use that skill set to relate it to uh, paper pencil or to just reading a book entirely, working on some of the same synonyms or antonyms or adjectives or whatever the skill set is for the day that we're working on. So I really think there's a piece that has to be taught along with it, with the transition component of giving proper accommodations to make sure the students understand that what they're seeing on the smart board is the same thing they're seeing in the book. I can relate to that because the students that I actually teach as well, it's easy for them to use pencil and paper to explain a problem. I have them go up to the smart board and try to do the same problem, <clears throat> they have a little bit of anxiety because one, they're in front of the classroom, and two, it is a new piece of technology that they have to get used to. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, when they first see it, it's it's a novel piece to them. It's, it's great that they can use it and that they can, at times, you know, be the center of attention to show what they know because I think students do hold back sometimes because they're fearful of, you know, not knowing what the correct answer is. But... We do a great job, especially in my classroom, when we have a small group setting, really encouraging each other to try. And if you don't get the right answer, that's okay. We'll just try again. And I think using the smart board to um, show some of those different things in the classroom, it's just become a wonderful piece of technology and effective, you know, it's, it's very effective in displaying some of the student With my instructional time, yes, it seems like I can effectively manage some class times so that we have some time to read out of a book or to do different activities because, you know, I'm teaching kindergarten and first graders, so I don't want to get away from the, you know, the art projects and using all the different modalities to teach them, you know, different skills that they're going to work on year after year, but also then finding time to do fun activities on the smart board where they're engaged in the learning process as well. So I haven't notice like a notice improvement in student test scores per se like the third grade Ohio achievement test um, to make a direct connection between instructional time and the smart board as compared to you know if it if it 
correlates with high test scores, but I think there will be some studies coming out in the near future that should be able to relate those two and show the effectiveness of using the smart board as a centerpiece of instruction. So basically we'll, time will tell if the kids have actually improved as they get older and see the smart board being adopted into the classroom more and more. So, okay. Definitely. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, this concludes uh, <clears throat> the interview. I'd like to thank Justin for his time. <laughs> thank Have you. Have a great day, man. <laughs> you too.